had a walk. Oh, had a trap. John Daner as Captain Lee Quince. Tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. Pass the word to dismount and unsaddle. All right, Captain. I'm going up on that little knoll. Maybe I can see Mr. Seibert's party from there. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Dismount and unsaddle, Fingray's water. Dismount and unsaddle, Fingray's water. All right. You unfit that mount for you grazing this time. Sure, Sergeant. I was just going. Well, you do it then. This mount on saddle, please water. We could make camp here, boat right there's water. Yeah. We could go hunting and fishing too. Maybe bake some bread. <laughs> If you don't like the army, why didn't you stay in Louisville? I was starving there, too. But at least in Louisville, I never had no Indians after my scalp. You afraid of Indians, Bull Ride? Sure. But I'm going to get me one. i got to get me an Indian. Why? Then I won't be scared no more. Well, at least you're not in the stockade. <laughs> and that's just because Captain Quince needs me. These troops supposed to have 83 privates full strength. I swear we're down to 60. Yeah, he needs me worse than I need him. What's the matter, Boatwright? Oh, nothing, Captain. Everything's fine. I like it out here. You better like it. Oh, sure be sitting around the stockade, sir. Last time you were in the stockade, did you just sit around? Well, no. No, but at least I didn't ride no horse out after Indians with an understrength troop. You'll never make a garrison soldier, Boatwright. Oh, I like the army, sir. Captain Quince? What did you find, Mr. Seibertz? We rode over there, sir, where the smoke was. There's a homestead, Captain. Sue. Sue! Well, that's hey, enough, Boatwright. Yes, sir. Did they leave anybody there, Mr. Seibertz? The man's still alive, sir. Corporal Mercer's with him. But the woman and the little girl, they're dead. I see. What does the man say? Nothing, sir. He's got no tongue. Take charge of the troop, Mr. Seibertz. Sergeant Gorse and I'll ride over there. Yes, sir. And, Captain, take a look at this. Where'd you pick it up? Sue. The only Indian the man killed before they got him. Mr. Seibertz, that's a Henry rifle. Latest model. If the Indians have gotten their hands on guns like that... Let's move out, Sergeant. You... Is he, Corporal? Is he bad, sir? They burned him some, too, but he's still conscious. Sure is a slow way to die. hundred miles to Fort Laramie, Captain. He'll never live that long. Sergeant, give me your revolver. <laughs> you and Corporal Mercer start back. I'll catch up with you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Pull out, Mercer. Think we'll go after them Sioux horse? I'm a first sergeant, not a captain. Well, I know, but you and Quince run this troop. He's Captain Quince to you. Sure. And he runs his troop. Sure.
boat. No. Everything all right, Captain? Everything's all right, Sergeant. Hey, what's that? Shut up and keep riding, Corporal. Well, what are you so hard? Shut, Shut up, up, I said. Oh, sure. Sergeant. Sir? When we get back, fall in a burial party. Yes, sir. See that those graves are cairned. Yes, sir. One other thing, Sergeant. Don't forget your revolver. That homesteader doesn't need it anymore. Captain Quince reporting, sir. Captain, I know you're mad because I ordered you back from chasing those Sioux last week. You didn't see what they did to that homestead family, Major. I've seen their work before, Quince. There'll be more of it if we don't stop them. Ten miles from this post, there's a reservation of 4,000 Sioux. An uprising there would be far more serious than your little band that's marauding under Yellowknife. You have enough troops to patrol the reservation, Major, and still secure Fort Laramie here. Give me just half of B Troop, and I'll run down Yellowknife and his renegades. My orders are to keep a constant watch on the reservation and to secure Fort Laramie with all remaining troops. Yellowknife is being supplied with rifles. Henry 44s. I know. Those are repeating rifles, Major. I've reported this to Washington, Captain. Whoever is smuggling those rifles has got to be stopped. Or every brave on the reservation will join Yellowknife. In spite of your patrols. I've received no change of orders, Captain. We can't afford to wait, sir. Give me Sergeant Gorse and three men, and I'll at least find that gun runner. I'll leave tonight, Major. You will not leave. Is that a direct order? It is. Am I interrupting, Uncle Ned? Oh, come in, my dear, come in. My niece, Captain, Miss Terry Lawson. This is Captain Quince, Terry. How do you do, Captain? Ma'am... Miss Lawson arrived while you were away, Captain. She's going to keep house for me if she doesn't change her mind about army life. Are you coming to the dance tonight, Captain Quince? Dance? Haven't you heard? I decided to hold a dance tonight, Captain, for such officers as are available and for a few civilians from Laramie. It'll show the Sioux we aren't as frightened as they might think we are. I see. You're coming, Captain? Do you think Washington can spare me for a dance, Major? Washington? Inactivity is a hard burden for the captain, Terry. Oh. But uh, I'd suggest the captain be at the dance tonight. Good day, miss. Major... Quince reporting his order, Major. <laughs> you uh, make it difficult, Captain. Uh, you remember my niece, Miss Lawson. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Captain. But it's Miss, not ma'am, if you please. Sorry, Miss. I wanted everyone possible to be here, Captain, for the sake of morale, you know. Yes, sir. A lot of the townspeople are here. Oh, there's Lieutenant Mapleton. Uh, would you escort Miss Lawson, Captain? Excuse me. Oh, uh, Mapleton. My arm. Thank you, Captain. You weren't in the war with Uncle Ned, were you? No. I started out as a scout for General McClellan just before Lee ran him away from Richmond. And you became an officer afterwards? I was commissioned in the field, Miss Lawson. President Lincoln was mighty short of officers by 65. They needed officers, and I made a good one. Captain, Uncle Ned says you know more about the Sioux than anyone at Fort Laramie. Do you think the rest of the reservation will make trouble? I don't know, miss. I haven't been out there. You mean you could tell just by going out there? Wild Dog's an old friend of mine. Who's Wild Dog? He's a chief. He's about 80, but he's pretty smart. Captain Quince, if those Sioux did rise, would they attack the fort here? It's hard to say. If there's 4,000 of them and only 400 of us. 
Shall we go back? Oh, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir? Until I return in the morning, you'll act in command of B Troop. I'm taking Sergeant Gorse with me. Any questions? No, sir. Then escort Miss Lawson back to the Major. You'll excuse me, Miss... You're going to see Wild Dog, aren't you? Yes. Isn't it pretty dangerous, Captain? Two of you walking right in among all those Sioux? We'll try to reach Wild Dog first. But, Captain... Good night, Miss Lawson. You are listening to Fort Laramie, starring John Daner as Captain Lee Quince. Drop your gun belt across your saddle, Sergeant. Mean that, Captain? A revolver wouldn't do you much good if these two decide they want us. We're safer unarmed. All right, sir. Let's move out. Wished I had at least a bowie knife. It's late. Most of them are asleep. Four thousand Sioux in this campaign all asleep. No. We're being watched, all right. Yeah. Some young buck could get himself his first coup feather by spearing us. You wouldn't want to stand in the way of a man becoming a brave, would you, Sergeant? Captain, we're being stopped. I see him. Keep walking. Only one brave we can handle him. Leave him to me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Oni, Oni. The only wild dog, Nya. He's the Ahi. He has value. He Let's move, Sergeant. I'll keep an eye on him. Still just standing there, sir. I told him I'm a friend of wild dogs. Luckily, he's from the same clan. What clan is that, Captain? White fox. There it is. Huh? See that medicine pole over there? With the white skin on it? That's wild dogs, Marge. Wait out here, Sergeant. Come in, my son. Sit down. It's been a long time since we've talked, wild dog. A long time. And you come now because of Yellow Knife. Yellow Knife is leading your young men into war with my people. Sue always been warriors. It is good to die in battle. Sue now have white man's rifles that shoot many times. And you know about the rifles? I know. Soon every brave on reservation will know, and they will leave. Guard of soldiers make no difference. It'll lead to war, wild dog. Big war. There are many clans among the Sioux. I am chief only of white fox. What clan is Yellowknife? Yellowknife is of two moon clan. But there are white fox braves with him? Yeah. I cannot stop them. I remember what it was like when I was young. It was different when you were young, Wild Dog. You had a chance then, but now they have no chance. They have many rifles. They have a few, Wild Dog. But the white man, the cavalry... Has thousands of rifles. In the end, the Sioux cannot win. He must live in peace or he will be wiped out. 
You're a wise man. You know this is true. Yes. You are right. Yellowknife and his braves will be caught and punished. Some of them will die. But if I don't stop his supply of rifles, many more of your people will die. You want to know where rifles come from? Tell me where Yellowknife meets the white man who's supplying them. I'll do the rest. You'll be saving lives, wild dog. Sioux lives. For the sake of my people, I, I tell you. Place north of here. Place you call Bright Canyon. Bright Canyon. When it's over, I'll come back and we'll smoke the pipe. Mm. If you come back. If I come back. Captain Quince reporting, sir. I hear you left the post last night, Captain. Yes, sir. Well, you never were much of a garrison soldier, were you? No, sir. You saw your friend Wild Dog, I suppose? Yes, sir. Well, Captain, I have new orders from Washington this morning. Yes, sir. As you know, I reported the matter of Yellowknife being supplied with Henry 44s. You mean I can run him down, Major? No. My orders to patrol the reservation and to secure Fort Laramie still stand. We are not to go after Yellowknife. But the importance of the Henry Rifles is recognized, and we're to put a stop to it. Yes, sir. Can you do it? I can. All right, take half of B Troop only. You may have Sergeant Gorse and Lieutenant Syberts and two corporals of your own choosing. Right, sir. Pass the head of your column through the main gates of the post one half hour before Reveille tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. And remember, Captain Quince, your orders are to stop that gun smuggler not to run down Yellowknife. And if you get into trouble, there'll be no reinforcement. Are there any questions? No, sir. Then move out. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir? Ride out here with me and take a look at these tracks. Well, one shot pony. The rest of them's mules, Captain. And they're not Indians, are they? No, sir. And they're headed straight for the rim of that canyon ahead. Bright canyon, Captain. Wild dog wasn't lying. Take five men and ride out ahead of Corporal Mercer's point. Make a reconnaissance of the north rim. If it's clear, send a runner back. Yes, sir. Tell the point to swing north and to dismount in the cover of those trees below the crest. Right, sir. Move out. Yeah. Mr. Cyber! Yes, Captain. I think we've found our man, Mr. Syberts. He'll be in that canyon up ahead. Sergeant Gorse is scouting the north rim of the canyon. If it's clear, we'll hide in those trees just below it. Then we'll wait. Wait for what, sir? We'll catch him in the act, Mr. Syberts, when Yellowknife comes for his rifles. Captain, you said Major Honeyman's orders are to get the gun smuggler and leave Yellowknife alone. If you do it this way, there'll be a fight. We're in the field, Mr. Syberts. I'll be responsible for my orders. Yes, sir. Not my fault if Yellowknife gets in the way when we move in on that gun smuggler. No, sir. Syberts passed the word to space out and stagger the odd files to the left. We're raising too much dust. Doing over here, Vickers. 
Go on back to your post. Oh, there's nothing happening down there in the valley. He's some gun smuggler. Just sits around in his cabin. What's the matter with Captain Quince, anyway? Half a troop against one man, and we hide around watching him for two days. You can't figure nothing, Vickers. We're waiting for Yellowknife. Them Sue? You mean we're going to fight them? As soon as they show up. You scared, Boatwright? All I need is to kill me an Indian. Then I won't be scared no more. Yeah, me too. I think. Who's throwing that rock? It's Gorson, Captain. Well, get on down there. He's signaling to you. Uh Oh, I'll catch it now. You're going away from your post, Vickers. I couldn't see nothing where I was. I was wondering if Boatwright could, Sergeant. You can be shot for leaving your post at a time like this, Vickers. Yes, sir, Captain. You're risking the life of every man in this troop. Get back to where you belong. Yes, sir, Captain. Boatwright wants us. Come on. The end of the canyon, sir. Look, there they come. Yellow knife. How many braves you figure he's got with him, Gorza? Hard to say yet, sir. Maybe 30. They got a bunch of horses, too. That's to pay for the rifles. Captain, I can see more than 30 Sioux down there. They must be nigh out of 40. There. There's that dirty gun runner now. Out talking with Yellow Knife. I wish we had the whole of B troop here, sir. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Take boat right and move about 300 yards west of here. When you're ready, I want you to ride straight down into the canyon. What? Shut up, boat right. Your orders are to find out if they're really trading for guns down oh, there. Oh, but, Captain, you... If you run into any trouble, I'll have to help you out of it. That's all. I understand, sir. Come on, boat right. Let's move out. Well, if all Please, the crazy... Shut up, like I told you. Tell Mr. Seibert's there. I want to see him. Right, sir. You wanted me, Captain? Mr. Seibert's? I think those Sioux down there are trading for Henry rifles. Sergeant Gorse and Boatwright are going to ride down and find out. You mean they're going alone, sir? They are. There'd sure be a fight if we appeared in force. Might even look like I was trying to run Yellowknife down. But they'll be killed, sir. Well, I can't let that happen. If they're attacked, we'll just have to ride in. It'll be a rescue mission, Mr. Syverts. I understand, Captain. Get back to the troop and pass the word to saddle and mount. Space out to 60 paces between mounts. It'll make us look full strength. Move out. Troops ready, Captain. Just in time. There go Gorse and boat right. They'll be seen any minute, sir. Yeah. Let's get back. <laughs> get mounted, Mr. Cyrus. Yes, sir. Him up there. I've never seen him, Captain. Then he must be in the cabin here. I'm going in after him. I'll go with you, sir. Oh, no, you stay with the troop. They've chased them far enough. Get those stolen horses rounded up. Right, sir. Here.
You're all through, mister. Come out of there. No. He ain't gonna hang me. Come out with your hands up and you'll get a trial. Hanging's bad. I ain't gonna hang. Your choice, mister. Come out or I'll kill you right there. I'll take my chances. Suits me. Captain. But we killed some of them. What about Yellow Knight? He's dead. Right over there, sir. Private Boatwright killed him. Is that Boatwright flying over there, too, Mr. Seibert? I'm afraid so, sir. He took a bullet after he got Yellow Knight. Sergeant Gorse has some men rounding up the horses, Mr. Seibert. Reform the rest of the troop and take care of the wounded. Pick out six men for a burial party. Yes, sir. Corporal Mercer! All ahead! Hello, Boatwright. Captain, sir? What can I do for you? Nothing, Captain. I'm all shut up. There's nothing anybody can do. That was Yellow Knife you killed, Boatwright. I always wanted to get me in you, Captain. But I sure never figured it'd be yelling, eh? Right? You did fine, both right. Here. Here's something. I took off yelling, right? You keep it for me. You know what it is. Yeah. I sure do. I feel all wet. Inside, yeah. I'm sorry, Boatwright. It's all right. I ain't scared. Of course not. Tell them all goodbye for me, Captain. All of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just finished going over your report, Captain. Yes, sir. And I'm not sure on reading it whether you deliberately disobeyed orders or not. Would you care to clarify that point? Major Honeyman, did you ever see one of these? That's a scalp. Private Boatwright took it off Yellowknife, Major. It's a woman's scalp. Young woman. Uh, get, get rid of it. Yes. Captain Quince, I'm reporting to Washington that the gun smuggler has been destroyed, but that you were attacked by Yellowknife during the operation and were forced to defend yourself. Thank you, Major. That's all, Captain. Oh, uh, uh Captain. Yes, sir? Miss Lawson wanted me to ask if you'd uh, care to have supper with us. My compliments to Miss Lawson, sir. I'll be there. Uh, one more thing. In regard to your recommendation for a posthumous medal for a private boat ride... Yes, sir? Uh, Washington might question a report that recommended an honor for one of the soldiers who actually brought on Yellow Knife's attack. For the good of the troop, I'd suggest... That's all right, Major. Boat ride would understand. He was a real soldier. A line soldier. Thank you, Captain. Yes, sir.
Short Laramie was written by John Meston with music by Rex Corey and was produced by Norman McDonald. Join us next week for another drama of the early frontier and of the brave men who fought under Captain Lee Quince, United States Cavalry. Captain Lee Quince, specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Sergeant, Sergeant Gorse, how are you? Oh, it's sure good to see you, Captain. You look kind of funny, though. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, them clothes, mufti. I ain't used to you out of uniform. I'll be back in uniform at midnight tonight, Sergeant. We'll stay in town till then. And you can buy me a drink. Me? By... I thought you was going to get rich in St. Louis. <laughs> Did I say that? Well, you talked about nothing else before your leave come through. Just proves you shouldn't believe everything you hear, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'll try to remember that. See that you do. And to really fool you, I may go back to St. Louis. Quit the Army? A man can make money there, Sergeant. I don't mean gambling. I mean honestly. In an honest business. Buying things. Selling them. Well, sir, the Army's sure no place for a man who wants to get rich. I'll say that. The Army's no place for a man who wants to do any living at all. You're either turning black with the boredom of garrison, or you're riding hell-bent into nowhere. That's sure enough true, Captain. Well, oh, come on, let's get our drink. How's B Company, Sergeant? Company's fine, sir. Major Daggett's going to be mighty glad to see you back at Fort Laramie. <laughs> he isn't going to see me till midnight. He'll be waiting up. Send me into town to tell you. Oh? Something wrong? Yes, sir. Well, what? Arapahoes. They've been raiding for horses. Massacred a whole family over in the basin about ten days ago. You mean... You mean they jumped the reservation? Not the whole tribe, just a few of them, I guess. Mr. Seibert's took B Company out last week, but he didn't have any luck. Why not? I don't know, Captain. I wasn't with him. What? I've been on sick list till two days ago. Sick list? You? Yes, sir. Uh, pack mule kicked me in the belly. Oh. Well, a little whiskey will cure that, Sergeant. <laughs> well, here we are. Mr. Seibert's is feeling mighty bad about it. 
your belly? <laughs> like I said, it's good to have you back, Captain. <laughs> uh, bottle of Rhine, two glasses. Coming up. Uh, the army. <laughs> hey, Moylan. Look at what came in. What's his trouble? Oh. Eight soldiers, I guess. <laughs> like a lot of people. Since Richmond. Yeah. Too much war, maybe. I guess everybody liked to forget it now. We all like to forget it. There's a war still going on. You're right, sir. Who do they think stands between them and all the hostiles out there waiting to hack them to pieces? Who does all their dirty work for them? It isn't like people to be grateful for any favors, Sergeant. No, sir, I guess not. When I think of the troops aching for home while they sweat and freeze and spill their blood all over the frontier for 50 cents a day, it makes me mad. Tell me about St. Louis, Captain. Here's your liquor, gentlemen. Hey, you! Hold it! You know them, Sergeant? No, sir. What's your trouble, mister? My name ain't mister. It's Rudio. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to the soldier. I'm with the soldier. You stay out of this. You know what's good for you. You tell him, Moylan. What do you want from me? I never saw you before. Yeah. You won't want to see us again after we're through with you. What's this all about? We don't like soldiers drinking where we drink, mister. We like to teach them a lesson now and then. Don't we, Moylan? Yeah, we do it, too. Now, you just... shut the... up, mister. What's the matter with you? Coming in here with a soldier. Gonna drink with him, too. Rudio, I just guess that he ain't no better than no soldier himself. Just scum floating with scum. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> well? Okay. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. You can have more than there. Thank you, sir. Move out. <laughs> Buy you that drink now, Captain Quince. You can buy the first one, Sergeant. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're half an hour late, Captain Quince. I was on the post at midnight, Major. I wanted to get back in the uniform before reporting. I'm glad of that, anyway. I kind of figured you would be. <laughs> you still think I'm too army, don't you, Lee? <laughs> We've known each other a long time, Major. Uh, since Vicksburg with Grant. Uh, I remember a night in Chattanooga you weren't very army. I've forgotten the girl's name, of course. <laughs> Captain Quince, I trust Sergeant Gorse told you about the Arapaho trouble. Yeah. They're out raiding for horses. They've slaughtered a family over in the basin. It's got to be stopped. Settlers are beginning to wonder what the 2nd Cavalry's doing at Fort Laramie. If this goes on, there won't be any settlers. Hard enough homesteading this country without a man waiting for him and his family to be massacred by renegade Indians. I'll take a patrol out in a few days, have a look around. You'll take B Company out tomorrow morning. May I make a suggestion, Major Daggett? If it's in order. Lieutenant Seibertz took B Company out and found nothing. Sure, he's green, but a few Arapaho can hide easy from a whole troop of cavalry beating its way through this country. 
Give me 12 men. I'll scout those Indians, get them set up. Then I'll come back for the company. No. No, it's too slow. There isn't time. Better let me try it, sir. I said no, Captain. You haven't got very far your way, Major. You have your orders. Yes, sir. Oh, Captain. Yes, sir. I heard you and Sergeant Gorse were in a brawl earlier this evening in town. Conduct and becoming an officer. You should learn to control your temper, Captain. I wonder what family the Arapahoes are putting the knife to tonight, Major Daggett. <sighs> should never start this sort of thing with you. Take your patrol. Yes, sir. Any further orders? We have Sergeant Gorse and Lieutenant Seibertz, but no other officers or non-commissioned officers. Right. Pass your men through the main gates of the post half hour before Reveille. Any questions? No, sir. Then move out. There's a cabin just over this rise, Captain Quince. Ah, must be new, Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir, it is. A man and his family, he's, um, he's raising horses. A man's a fool. There's just as good land a day's ride from the fort. You're right, sir. Am I, Mr. Seibertz? Of course, sir. What if the man likes it out here, away from people? That make him a fool? No, sir. Then I'm wrong. I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. You agree too easily, Mr. Seibertz. Better learn to think for yourself. Yes, sir. Now, where is your cabin? Well, you'll see it in a minute, sir. There it... No. Look, it's been burned. Oop. Sergeant! So's the Rappahoes again, Captain. Yes, Captain. Look down there, Sergeant. Hmm. File the patrol out of scouts, Sergeant. A thousand yards between men. If there's any Indians around, I want to know it. The men will watch us at the cabin for arm signals. Right, sir. And then join Mr. Seibertz and me down there. Move out. Yes, sir. Follow me, Mr. Sabitz. Looks like they slaughtered every one of them. family, Mr. Seibertz? That's all of them, sir. Thank God for that. Every one of them scalped. Even the boy. Oh, at least they... they weren't tortured. No, sir. Tell me... Uh, Tell me, Mr. Seibertz, was the the other family like this? Why, yes, sir. I see. Made quite a mess, didn't they? Take a good look, Sergeant. How many horses did this man have, Mr. Seibertz? About ten, as I remember, sir. Hmm. Well, Sergeant? Funny thing. What is? Well, Captain, I don't know how them Arapahoes could have surprised them so fast. What makes you think they did? Not many arrows around. 
If man had had a chance to put up any fight at all, there'd be a lot of arrows. Is that all? Yes, sir. You sure? Well, yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse, I excuse Mr. Seibert's because of his lack of experience. But you, you're a disgrace to the cavalry. Ought to clean your sleeve and send you back to stable detail. Yes, sir. Don't stand there, Gab, and use your eyes. I'm looking. Look harder. There ain't no tracks. No tracks? Somebody dragged him out with a blanket. Somebody? Why do you say somebody, Sergeant? I don't know, sir. There's something wrong here. Look, how old's that boy, Sergeant? Maybe 12, 13. Old enough to be a brave in a couple of years if he was an Indian? Yes, sir. Don't Arapahoes usually keep a boy that age and try to make a warrior out of him? They always do. Now, wait. Them tracks, they wouldn't hide their tracks. No, they wouldn't. Captain. Yeah? Now I know why you got so mad. I'm pretty mad myself. Took you long enough. Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir? A man wearing moccasins doesn't care about his tracks. He's got nothing to hide. Wasn't the Rappahoes did this. Wasn't Indians at all. It was white men. <laughs> place is this, Captain? Oh, Jake Steele and his wife. Their daughter lives with them. Shouldn't their daughter live with them, sir? Ollie's 19, going on 20. She had some schooling back east. You mean she should be married now? This country needs women, Mr. Seibertz, but it doesn't need single women. Yes, sir. Patrol! Hunt! Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir? Dismount and unsaddle. Dry the horses, turn them into the corral yonder. Cache the saddles over in that brush so they can't be seen. All other equipment the men will keep. Yes, sir. Two men will stand by for escort duty. Move out. Yes, sir. Captain Quince, Miss Steele. Well, Captain, what are you and your troopers doing out here? I'll tell you if you ask me in. Oh, well, come in. Where's your family? Well, they rode over to the Abbott place. That's a long ride. We're spending the night. They'll be back tomorrow. Why? Is there trouble? No, not for you, Holly. Then what are you doing here? I came to borrow your ranch. What? I need it for a few days, maybe maybe a week. Now, Captain, You I... and your folks can stay with the Abbots for a while. I'll send for you when I'm through here. You seem to have it all figured out. I have. Of course. Shall I leave right now, Captain Quince? Sooner the better. I'm sending an escort with you. Well, that's very kind of you. I can spare a couple of troopers. Then you'll move in here. Sergeant Gorse and me. Wouldn't you like for me to stay and cook for you? No, no, no. You, you, you couldn't do that. Why? Don't you think I'm a good cook? <laughs> Maybe when this is over, I'll, I'll ride back sometime. And find out. Captain Quince, just because you and I've met once or twice at Fort Laramie Dance... Now just a minute, Miss Holly. You don't understand. Don't I? Uh, I should have explained. There's... There's going to be a fight here. Fight? I'm using this place for a trap, baiting it with a bunch of horses. And when the men I'm after come for them... Well, we'll be waiting. What men? Men who've been stealing horses, 
Murdering settler families, blaming it on the Arapahoes. You mean it? It's white men who've been doing that? I do. Captain Quince, I'm beginning to understand that being in the cavalry, you're accustomed to ordering people around and not explaining anything. I'm sorry, Holly, I, I upset you. Now, if you'll wait outside while I get some things together, I'll ride up to the Abbots with that escort you promised me. Good. Oh, Captain. Yes? I hope you have a chance someday to find out about my cooking. What I mean is, good luck. Thank you, Holly. Go on, get out of here now. It took me that long to do something, I'd get busted to a private. You can still get busted, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Mr. Seibertz! Right here, Captain. You'll take over the patrol, Mr. Seibertz. I want you to spot the men in a complete circle around this place half a mile out. They're to dig in. And when they think they're hidden, I'm going to ride that circle. I understand, sir. Heaven help any trooper I can see. Yes, sir. They're to let those men through. But when they hear gunfire from the cabin here, they're to kill anything that tries to get back out. Any questions? No, sir. Move out. Yes, sir. Uh, well, Sergeant, you and I are going to be sitting on the pan of this trap. Like poisoned meat, huh? Maybe. Before we get off. You have to do that, Sergeant. I didn't join the army to be locked up in this coop for three days. Maybe you'd rather be sitting outside with the real men. Half buried, afraid to move, with nothing but a canteen of water and a handful of jerky. And no smokes. And no smokes. Captain Quince, I never had it so good, sir. Then shut up. Dark out already? Good. Ain't the kind of men who'd attack even a woman in the daylight. No, I guess not. Gorse, you lied to me. Uh, what? No smokes. You tried to make me think you'd find it rough out there with the troopers because they can't smoke. Well? You never smoked in your life, you ape. Not with that quid of tobacco in your jaw day and night. What are you trying to give me? You need action too, Captain. As bad as I do. Yeah, I do. Three days of this is worse than a winter in garrison. You go to St. Louis, I'm going with you. That easy money Shh, sounds... wait, wait. Come here. What is it? Horses. Listen. We got them, Captain. We got them. Okay. Move fast. Get out the back window. Come up the off side of the cabin. But don't shoot till I get at least one of them inside here. Yes, sir. Good hunting, Captain. Same to you, Sergeant. Open up. We want to have a little talk with you. Look out, Jim. You'll have a gun. Listen, mister. We ain't gonna hurt nobody. We got something to tell you is all. Let's 
fix them and get out of here, Jim. We're just passing by, mister. Got some news for you. Maybe there ain't nobody home. They wouldn't leave all them horses alone, would they? Uh, I, I'm coming in, mister. Don't shoot now. Have your daughter light the lamp, mister. Then we can talk. Jim. Jim. What happened? You're next, mister. You okay, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Well, we got two of them anyway. I didn't realize there were more than that. He was holding their horses. Well, the troopers will take care of him. They deserve a little action, too. They sure do. Who are they, do you know? Strangers. The one inside dead? I didn't kill him. But you took an awful chance, Captain. It'll be worth it. Maybe we can find out what they did with all the horses they've stolen. Maybe we can take them back. Yes, sir. But, well, there's two families won't never get theirs. Hear that, Captain? Mission accomplished. No more women and kids dying hard. Feels kind of good, don't it, Captain? Don't it? Sergeant? Yes, sir? Feels a whole lot better than making money in St. Louis. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Meston, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Dan Riss, and Joyce McCluskey, with Lawrence Dobkin, Clayton Post, Paul Duboff, and James Nusser. Old Man Trouble takes it on the chin five nights a week when Bing begins to sing, which is just dandy for everybody else who's listening in. Since Old Man Trouble has no great charm to speak of, and since Bing Crosby has an ear for melody, a cheery disposition, and many other charms as well, folks naturally prefer to spend their time with Bing. For good company and easygoing songs, hear the Bing Crosby Show Monday through Friday nights over most of these same stations. Company, tension! Dismiss! Join us again next week for another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry.
At the gallop! Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Dismount and unsaddle, pin graze and water. Dismount and unsaddle, pin graze and water. You there, boat right. You unbit that mount for you graze him this time. Sure, Sergeant. I just going to. We'll do it then. Mm-hmm. Dismount and unsaddle, pin graze and water. Uh. Oh. We could make camp here, boat right. There's water. Yeah, we could go hunting and fishing too, Vickers. Maybe bake some bread. If you don't like the army, why didn't you stay in Louisville? Uh, I was starving there, too. But at least in Louisville, I didn't have no Indians after my scalp. You afraid of Indians, boat right? Afraid? Come here. I'm going to tell you something. What? I'm going to get me an Indian. What you talking about, boat right? I'm going to get me an Indian, I said. I got to get me one. Why? Then I won't be scared no more. All right, you go get the Indian. I, me, I'd rather stay scared. Hey, give me a chaw of your tobacco. Here. But bite easy on it. It's all there is to payday. Uh, <laughs> payday. Army's got two-thirds of my pay for the next three years. Well, at 50 cents a day, that don't amount to such a whole lot, boat, right? <laughs> You sure think funny, Vickers. At least you ain't in the stockade. You ought to be grateful for that. I should, huh? The reason I ain't in the stockade is because Captain Quince needs me out here. B Company's supposed to have 83 privates, full strength. I swear we're down to 60. We are. That's what I'm saying. So Captain Quince needs me worse than I need him. Where'd he go, anyway? Oh, you make a fine scout. You don't even see where your own company commander rode off to. It ain't none of my business where he goes. You know what you are? You're a dumb trooper. Somebody says, sit down. You sit down. Somebody says, stand up. You stand up. Somebody says, here's your home. You start taking off your shoes. You're getting riled again, boat right? <laughs> Captain Quince rode up to that knoll over there looking for Lieutenant Sybert's patrol. No, I don't see him. He come back five minutes ago. He's walking down the line behind you right now. Oh. Hmm. Looks tired, don't he? Commanding a company that's got stockade soldiers like you'd make anybody tired, boat right? Now you watch your mouth. Oh, can't you take a ribbon? Hello, Captain. How do you like the open air, boat right? Fine, Captain. I need a good ride. No complaints then? No, no. No, sir. None at all. I like it fine out here. You better like it. Yes, sir. Sure beats sitting around the stockade. When you're in the stockade, you just sit around, boat ride? No, sir. But at least I didn't ride no horse out after wild Indians with an understrength troop. You don't fool me, boat ride. You'll never make a garrison soldier. That's why I'm proud to be with you, Captain. When we return to Fort Laramie, you go back into the stockade, you know that. I always said I liked the Army, Captain. Lieutenant Seibert's reporting, sir. What'd you find, Mr. Sanders? Well, sir, we rode over there where the smoke was. And? It was a homestead, Captain, fired by the Sioux. Did they leave anybody there, Mr. Sanders? Man's still alive, sir. Corporal Mercer's with him. But 
the woman and the little girl, they're dead. I see. What does the man say? Nothing, sir. He's got no tongue. Take charge of the troop, Mr. Sybert. Sergeant Gorse and I'll ride over there. Yes, sir. And Captain, take a look at this. That's a Henry rifle, Mr. Sybert's latest model. If the Indians have gotten their hands on guns like that, why, we're in bad trouble. <laughs> Is he, Corporal? Bad, sir. They burned him some, too, but he's still conscious. Sure a slow way to die. It's a hundred miles to Fort Laramie, Captain. You'd never live that long, Sergeant. Give me your revolver. You and Corporal Mercer start back. I'll catch up with you. Yes, sir. Well, move out, Mercer. Think we'll go after them, Sue Gorse? I'm a first sergeant, not a captain. Well, I know, but you and Quince run this company. He's Captain Quince to you, Mercer. Oh, sure. And he runs this company. For sure. Everything all right, Captain? Everything's all right, Sergeant. Hey, what was that? You shut up and keep riding, Corporal. You don't have to get so hard-nosed about Shut up, I said. Well, sure. Sergeant. Yes, sir. When we get back, fall in a burial party. Yes, sir. And see that those graves are canned. Yes, sir. And one other thing, Sergeant. Don't forget to pick up your revolver. That homesteader doesn't need it anymore. Captain Quince reporting, Major. Sit down, Captain. I know you're mad because I ordered you back from chasing those Sioux last week, Lee, but... You didn't see what they did to that homestead family. I've seen their work before. There'll be more of it if we don't stop them. Ten miles from this post, there's a reservation of 4,000 Sioux. An uprising there would be far more serious than your little band that's marauding under Yellowknife. You have enough troops to patrol the reservation and still secure Fort Laramie here. Give me just half of B Company and I'll run down Yellowknife and his renegades. My orders are to keep a constant watch on the reservation to secure Fort Laramie with all remaining troops. Yellowknife is being supplied with rifles, Henry 44. I know that. Those are repeating rifles, Major. I've reported that to Washington, Captain. Whoever's smuggling those rifles has got to be stopped or every brave on the reservation will join Yellowknife in spite of your patrols. I've received no change of orders, Captain. We can't afford to wait, sir. Give me Sergeant Gorse and three men, and I'll find that gunrunner. We'll leave tonight, Major. You'll not leave. That a direct order? It is. Then, with the Major's permission... Mr. Seibertz. Yes, Captain? I'm leaving the post at 6 o'clock this evening. I'm taking Sergeant Gorse with me. Until I return, you'll act in command of B Company. Any questions? None that would be proper, sir. You're learning, Mr. Seibertz. I'll tell you where I'm going. There's a chief out in the reservation, an old friend of mine, Wild Dog. He's about 80, and he's pretty smart. You're going to have a talk with him. That's right. If you'll excuse me, sir. Well, isn't it... Pretty dangerous walking right in among all those Sioux. We'll try to reach Wild Dog before anything happens. But, Captain... That's all, Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir. Drop your gun belt across your saddle, Sergeant. You mean that, Captain? A revolver wouldn't do you much good if these Sioux decide they want us. We're, we're safer unarmed. All right, sir. I 
All right, let's move out. I sure wish I had me at least a bowie knife, Captain. I don't trust any of these devils. Yeah, it's late. Most of them are asleep. There's 4,000 Sioux in this camp. They ain't all asleep. Oh, no, we're being watched, all right. Mm -hmm. Some young buck could get his first coup feather by spearing us. You wouldn't want to stand in the way of a man becoming a brave, would you, Sergeant? Captain, we're being stopped. I see him. Keep walking. There's only one brave. We can handle him. Leave him to me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Oni, uh, oh, yeah. Diary, wild dog, yeah. Ishli, ah, ye. Il, yeah. Zo, val, yeah. Ay, zo. Let's move, Sergeant. But keep an eye on him. Still standing there, sir. I told him I'm a friend of wild dogs. Luckily, he's from the same clan, White Fox. There it is. See that medicine pool over there? With a white skin on it? That's Wild Dog's Lodge. Wait out here, Sergeant. Oh, oi, oh, Laya Zia. Nice, Liuzo. Come in, my son. Sit down. It's been a long time since we talked, Wild Dog. A long time. And now you come because of Yellowknife. Yellowknife is leading your young men into war with my people. There are many clans among the Sioux. I am chief only of White Fox. What clan is Yellowknife? Yellowknife is of Two Moon clan. But there are White Fox braves with him. Yes, I cannot stop them. I remember what it was like when I was young. It was different when you were young, Wild Dog. You had a chance then. But now, they have no chance. They have many rifles. They have a few, Wild Dog. But the white man, the cavalry, has thousands of rifles. In the end, the Sioux cannot win. You are a wise man. You know this is true. Yes, you are right. Yellowknife and his braves will be caught and punished. Some of them will die. But if I don't stop his supply of rifles, many more of your people will die. You want to know where rifles come from? Tell me where Yellowknife meets the white man who's supplying them. I'll do the rest. You'll be saving lives, wild dog. Sioux lives. For the sake of my people, I tell you. A place north of here. A place you call Bright Canyon. Bright Canyon. Well, when it's over, I'll, I'll come back and we'll smoke the pipe. Yes, if you come back. If I come back. Captain Quint's reporting, sir. I hear you left the post last night, Captain. Yes, sir. Well, you never were much of a garrison soldier, were you? No, sir. You saw your friend Wild Dog, I suppose? Yes, sir. Well, Lee, I have new orders from Washington this morning. Yes? My orders to patrol the reservation and to secure Fort Laramie still stand. We're not to go after Yellowknife. But the importance of the Henry Rifles is recognized and we're to put a stop to it. Yes, sir. Can you do it? I can. All right. Take half of B Company only. Yes, sir. You'll pass the head of your column through the main gates of the post one half hour before Reveille tomorrow morning. Right, sir. And remember, Captain Quince, your orders are to stop that gun smuggler not to run down Yellowknife. Any questions? No, sir. Then move out. Sergeant Gorse? 
Yes, sir. Sergeant, ride out here with me and take a look at these tracks. One shod pony and the rest is mules, Captain. Then they're not Indians, are they? No, sir. And they're headed straight for the rim of that canyon ahead. Bright canyon, Captain? Yeah, Wild Dog wasn't lying. Take five men right out ahead of Corporal Mercer's point. Make a reconnaissance of the north rim. If it's clear, send a runner back. Yes, sir. Tell the point to swing north and to dismount from the cover of those trees below the crest. Right, sir. Move out. Mr. Seibert! Yes, Captain. I think we've found our man, Mr. Seibert. He'll be in that canyon up ahead. Sergeant Gorse is scouting the north rim of the canyon. If it's clear, we'll hide in those trees just below it. And then... Then we'll wait. Wait for what, sir? Why, we'll catch him in the act, Mr. Seibert, when Yellowknife comes for his rifles. But, Captain... The... It's not my fault if Yellowknife gets in the way when we move in on that gun smuggler. No, sir. Mr. Seibert's passed the word to space out, stagger the odd files to the left. We're raising too much dust. Hey, boat right. What are you doing over here, Vickers? Go on back to your post. Oh, there's nothing happening down there in the valley. Hmm. He's some gun smuggler. Just sits around in his cabin. What's the matter with Captain Quince, anyway? Half a troop against one man, and we hide around watching him for two days. You can't figure nothing, Vickers. We're waiting for Yellowknife. You mean we're gonna fight them Indians? Soon as they show up? You scared, Bootright? All I need is to kill me an Indian. And I won't be scared no more. Yeah, me too. I think. Who's throwing that rock? It's Gorse and the captain. Well, get down there. He signaled to you. Oh, man, I'll catch it now. What you doing away from your post, Vickers? I, I couldn't see nothing where I was. I was wondering if Boatwright could, Sergeant. You can be shot for leaving your post at a time like this, Vickers. Yes, sir, Captain. You're risking the life of every man in this troop. I'll get back where you belong. Yes, sir, Captain. Captain Boatwright wants us. All right, come on. The end of the canyon, sir. Look, there they come. Yellow knife. How many braves you figure he's got with him, Gorse? Hard to say yet, sir. Maybe 30. They got a bunch of horses, too. Yeah, that's to pay for the rifles. Captain, I can see more than 30 Sioux down there. Must be nigh on to 40. Yeah. There's that dirty gun runner now out talking with Yellowknife. I wish we had Hula B Company here. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Take boat right and move out about 300 yards west of here. When you're ready, I want you to ride straight down into the canyon. What? Shut up, Boat Ride. Your orders are to find out if they're really trading for guns down there. But, Captain... If you run into any trouble, I'll have to help you out of it, that's all. I understand, sir. Come on, Boat Ride, let's move. Well, of all the... Shut up, right to... And tell Mr. Seibert's there I want to see him. Right, sir. Me, Captain? Mr. Sabbats, I think those Sioux down there are trading for Henry rifles. Sergeant Gorse and Boatrat are going to ride down and find out. You mean they're going alone, sir? They are. It'd sure be a fight if we appeared in force. Might even look like I was trying to run Yellowknife down. But they'll be killed, sir. Well, I can't let that happen. If they're attacked, we'll just have to ride in. It'll be a rescue mission, Mr. Sabbats. 
I understand, Captain. All right, now get back to the troop, pass the word to saddle and mount. Space out to 60 paces between mounts. It'll make us look full strength. Right, sir. And Mr. Seibertz, I'll shoot the first man who crosses the ridge before I give the signal. Pass the order and then come back here. Any questions? No, sir. Move out. Troops ready, Captain. Just in time. There go Gorse and Boatwright. They'll be seen any minute, sir. Yeah. Let's get back. Get mounted, Mr. Sabitz. Yes, sir. When we reach the cabin, you lead the troops. I'll stop for the gun runner. As skirmishers, ho! At the trot, ho! seen him, Captain. Well, he must be in the cabin here. I'm going in after him. I'll go in with you, sir. No, no, you stay with the troop. They've chased him far enough. And get those stolen horses rounded up. Right, sir. You're all through, mister. Come out of there. Oh, you ain't going to hang me. Come out with your hands up. You'll get a trial. Hanging's bad. I ain't gonna hang. It's your choice, mister. Come out or I'll kill you right there. I'll take my chances. Suits me. Oh. Uh -uh. They're still running, Captain. But we killed some of them. What about Yellowknife? He's dead, sir. Right over there. Private Boatwright killed him. That boat rat lying over there too, Mr. Sabitz? Afraid so, sir. He took a bullet after he got yellow knife. Sergeant Gorse has some men rounding up the horses, Mr. Sabitz. Reform the rest of the troop. Take care of the wounded. Detail six men for a burial party. Yes, sir. Mercer! Hello, Boatwright. Captain, sir. What can I do for you? Nothing, Captain. I'm all shut up. There's nothing anyone can do. That... That was Yellowknife you killed, Boatwright. I, I always wanted to get me in Indian, Captain. But I sh sure never figured... It'd be yellow knife. You did fine, Boatrat. But, but here, here's something I, I took off yellow knife. You keep it for me. You know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I sure do. <laughs> I, f I feel all wet inside, Captain. I'm. Um. I'm sorry, Boatwright. It's all right. I ain't scared. Of course not. Tell them goodbye for me, Captain. All of them.
Captain Quince reporting, sir. Oh, I've just finished going over your report, Captain. Yes, sir. I'm not sure on reading it whether you deliberately disobeyed orders or not. Would you care to clarify that point? Major Daggett, did you ever see one of these? That's a scalp. Private Boatwright took it off a yellow knife, Major. It's a woman's scalp. Young woman. Get rid of it. Yes, sir. Captain Quince, I'm reporting to Washington that the gun smuggler has been destroyed, but that you were attacked by Yellowknife during the operation and were forced to defend yourself. Thank you, Major. That's all, Captain. Oh, Captain. Yes, sir? Just one more thing. In regard to your recommendation for a posthumous medal for private boat ride... Yes, sir. Washington might question a report that recommended an honor for one of the soldiers who actually brought on Yellowknife's attack. So, uh, for the good of the company, I'd suggest... That's all right, Major. Boatwright... Boatwright would understand. He was a real soldier. A line soldier. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Meston, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Bob Sweeney, Sam Edwards, Jack Moyles, Jan Arvin, Joe Cranston, and Lou Krugman. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. People keep saying that conversation is a lost art, but meanwhile, proof keeps popping up that they're wrong. All that's needed is a good conversationalist, and one of the best is a man who's also rather well-known as a singer and an actor, a man named Bing Crosby. You can hear Bing holding forth on almost every subject under the sun, lighting up the subject with his own easy and humorous point of view, each evening, Monday through Friday, on his own show, over most of these same stations. And, uh, oh yes, you'll hear plenty of wonderful singing, too. After all, it's the Bing Crosby Show.
Fort Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Looks like they're about ready to pull out, Captain. Yeah. Walk back with me, Sergeant. I never did see such a mangy collection of stock. It's not a cavalry outfit, Gorse. It sure ain't. Most of these wagon trains heading west get through, one way or another, but I sure don't know how. I talked with Mr. Brown a couple of times. He seems like a good man. He is. But I wonder how much luck a Missouri farmer is going to have taking a couple of hundred women and children through Indian country. He'll make out, Captain. I hope so. Hello, Sergeant Gorse. I beg your pardon, miss? I was afraid we'd leave without seeing you again. Oh, well, I... I... And I wanted to thank you for last night. Yeah, sure, miss. Goodbye, Sergeant. And thank you. Still water runs deep, Gorse. How's that, Captain? Yeah, never mind. All I did was give her a little old knife. I, I bought it at the sutler. Never mind, never That's mind, That's all Sergeant. it was, Captain. I, I just give her a little old present. Sure, Sergeant. Keep them wagons in line. Two abreast till we hit the river. You're late getting started, Mr. Brown. Oh, hello, Captain Quince. Well, only about an hour. You're wasting daylight. Yeah, we're pulling out now, Captain. Any of your men going to ride along with us? No, but you won't have any trouble. Like they say, Captain, Oregon or bust. You guarantee no trouble, Captain? Out here, we don't guarantee anything, Mr. Brown. But you should at least get through to Salt Lake without trouble. Yeah, I hope you're right. It's mighty lonely out there once you're out of sight of the fort. Yeah, I know. Well, thank the Major for his hospitality, will you? No thanks necessary. Well, good luck. Thanks. See you in Oregon sometime, Captain. All right. Bridge out. Well, Gorse, what are you staring at? Oh, nothing, Captain. Just a train heading out. You've seen a few hundred of them before, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Hmm. What's her name? Who? The girl. Emily. Emily McCutcheon. Going to Oregon with her pa. She was put up real good. <laughs> You're all cavalry, Gorse. Yes, sir. Long way to Oregon. I hope they make it. So do I. Yeah, come on. I missed coffee this morning. Let's find some. There's a rider coming in. Yeah. Looks like a white man, dressed in buckskin. Hunter, maybe. It's Will Granby. He's a squaw man, eh? Yeah, lives with the Arapaho. Captain? How are you, old horse? Mm, tolerable. Well, it's good to see you. You haven't been in in two or three years. Nope. You come for supplies? Come to parley. Got a proposition. Huh? All right, come on in, Will. Mm, oblige. Uh, Sergeant Gorse, would you have Mr. Granby's horse stabled? Yes, sir. Come on, come on. Sit down, Will. Hmm. You're blood. All right, now what is it? What's your proposition? 
I figured maybe to hire out to you. You want a job? Cavalry always needs scouts. Maybe. <laughs> you saying you want the job? Why not? I know this country better than the hairs of my head. Better than any man except old Gabe Bridger. There's some few places I've been even Gabe ain't. You're a mountain man, Will. You lived wild and free all your life. Why do you want to tie yourself down now? Yeah. It ain't like the old times no more, Captain. It ain't pleasurable now. It's hard. Maybe it's a doing you cavalry fellers. Or maybe it's our own fault. Maybe we trapped too much. Took too much buffalo. I don't know. But uh, I got me a young squaw. Prettiest you ever seen. I figured if I was to work, her and me'd eat regular at least. Right now we have peace. We don't need any more scouts. I figure you do, Captain. Tell me, Will. Am I hired? I haven't got the authority to hire you. That'll have to come from the Major. No, I, I'd rather deal with you. I know you. I can't hire you, but if you've got information, I'll make you a promise. At least I'll feed you and send you back with meat. Yeah, meat I could carry wouldn't last long. Then we'll go see the Major. Now, wait. I'd rather tell you, but uh, you've got to promise me one thing. What's that? That it'll be settled peaceful. They're my people. Will, uh, I'll do all I can. All right. There's going to be trouble. Tribes are getting restless, all of them. The Arapaho, even. Government promised them if they'd go to the agencies, they'd get food, meat. And that promise ain't been kept. Yeah, I know. A supply train comes through now and then, but it's not enough, I know that. The Arapaho are starving, Captain. Eating bark and roots. Game on agencies played out. If they can't get food from the government or from the land, then they got to go looking for it wherever they can. They got to eat. Will, have they left the agency? Or camped at Silver Spring. That's on the Oregon Trail. Mm, they got to eat, Captain. They went looking for buffalo, but there ain't no buffalo. So they'll get food where they can from the wagon trains. Well, we got to talk to the Major. Did you promise? I said I'd do all I could, and I will. Not much time for talking. There's a wagon train headed for Silver Springs right now. Yeah, I know. I saw it. All right, come on. We'll see the Major. How do we know this man's telling the truth? I've known him for a long time, Major. He doesn't lie. Could be a trap. If it is a trap, then there's trouble for sure. I don't trust a man lives with Indians, marries them. No, no, look here. You Major, there's a wagon train on the trail to Silver Springs right now. They've got to be warned. I can still ride out with a detachment to turn them back. Captain Quince, our orders are to keep the trail open to Oregon and to keep the Indians on the agencies. If anything, we'll send a company to escort the train through and run those Arapaho back where they belong. Couldn't do that without fighting, Major. That's one of the functions of the cavalry. In this case, there's no cause for it. The Arapaho have broken their treaty, Captain. The way they see it, we're the ones who broke the treaty by not keeping our promise about food. All I know is they're off the agency and they'll have to go back. If we go out in force, there's bound to be trouble. If I take a small detachment, maybe I can talk to him. This is a hostile action, Captain. It's got to be met as such. Major, the Arapaho are starving. they got to eat. Mr. Granby, I'm sorry that they're starving, but I can't do anything about it. At least not until the supplies come through to me. My orders are to keep the Arapaho on the agency, and I can do something about that. Those are people out there, Major, and they're hungry. They only want food. Captain Quince, you'll take Company B and escort the wagon train until you meet the Arapaho. You'll send the wagon train on and escort the Indians to the agency and use whatever measures are necessary. That's all, Captain. Yes, sir. One thing, sir. What is it? Have I your permission to hire Will Granby as a scout? I don't see why it's necessary, but if you want him, take him. Thank you, sir. What kind of a man is that? Oh, he's all right, Will. He's an officer. He's got his orders. He goes by the book. He understands the situation all right, but he can't admit it. Listen, can you be ready to move out in an hour? I can't ride with you, Captain. They're my people. Will, I said I'd do what I could. I need your help. Ride with me. 
Do you know what you're asking? You know what it might mean for me if there's trouble? There won't be trouble if I can prevent it. I'm afraid you can't, Captain. But I'll go with you. We should see him just over this hill, Captain. Yeah, if the Arapaho didn't see him first. You figure they'd attack? I don't know, Sergeant. But I'll feel easier when we spot that wagon train. I was right, Captain. There they are. All right, Sergeant. Let's ride out. Company! At the gallop! At the gallop! Ho! Sergeant, blind men would have known we were here. Company! Oh! What's the matter, Captain? I want you to stop here, Mr. Brown, for the night. Oh, why? We figured to camp at Silver Springs. It's just over the pass there, not more than two or three miles. We can make it easy before dark. This'll make an all right camp. There's water and wood. If there's trouble, Captain, I want to know. It may be nothing, Mr. Brown, but I want to find out. You to camp here and stay here till I give you the word to go on. It's Indians, ain't it? There is trouble. Maybe. Maybe not. But there's no use worrying all your folks. You'll be safe here. I'm leaving most of my men to guard you. Well, why can't you escort us over the pass to Silver Spring? Because if there were to be trouble, it would happen there in the pass. With the wagon trains all strung out and hard to defend. Uh, all right, Captain. Whatever you say. I'll come back or send word back to Lieutenant Seibert as soon as I know it's safe for you to cross. Sergeant Gorse! Yes, sir? You and two men will accompany Mr. Granby and myself. Pick them and fall out. Mr. Brown, Lieutenant Seibert is in charge here till I get back. I don't see a doggone thing, Captain. Now keep a sharp eye. Move the troopers further out the flank. Yes, sir. You need to hear somewhere that I can feel it. Yeah, they must have seen the train, Will. Yeah, they have, but they also saw the soldiers. They might be making tracks already. They disappear pretty fast. I don't think they've had that much time. They'll probably stand for a fight. And, Captain, what are you going to do? Will, a few miles back, did you, uh, did you notice anything? On the trail? Sure, buffalo sign. Right. It's the first I've seen this close to Laramie in a year. Mm-hmm. Big herd, too. Across the trail going south. It'd make a lot of Arapaho meat. Yeah, it might work. Worth a try. Wait. You see anything, Will? Yeah, one of the scouts. Leave it to me. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. All right. He'll take us in. First Indian village I ever been in, and it wasn't full of barking dogs. They had to eat them. You notice how it is, Captain? Yeah, I see. I'd say they're not very happy to see us. No. I'm I'm sorry, Will, to turn them against you. Uh, can't be helped. Yeah, this is it. Hi, Daddy too. Why do you bring white soldiers to fight your people? They don't come to fight, Grey Feather. 
This Captain Quince, he comes as a friend. White soldier is not a friend of our Arapaho. White soldiers break promise. They do not give meat. I think I can get you meat, Gray Feather. I think I can take your hunters to Buffalo, a big herd. You think? You do not know. Our Arapaho have ride from agency in north, hunt buffalo all through Wide Valley. No buffalo. Gray Feather... On my way here from Fort Laramie, I saw much buffalo sign. You hunted only the north side of the river. You haven't been south of the Platte. I have. There are buffalo there. To hunt take many days. Wagon train is here now. If you attack that wagon train, it'll mean much fighting. Many dead among the Arapaho. Great mourning among the Arapaho. There will be mourning for the white soldiers, too. The army will keep on sending soldiers, rifles, until the Arapaho is no more. You know I speak the truth. My people are hungry. Then ride back towards the fort with me. I'll show you a buffalo sign, then you can track from there. Take many days. It's the only way you can be sure to find buffalo and food. If you find buffalo in two days... Gray Feather does not attack wagon train. Two days isn't very long. Two days. If we do find buffalo, I want your promise to go peacefully back to the agency. If you find. All right, your hunters will come with me. But meantime, you must let the wagon train go through in peace. This one, maybe not next one. It is agreed then, Gray Feather. Captain, two days ain't very long. We gotta be awful lucky. We don't have much choice. You know what'll happen if we don't find buffalo. Yeah. It'll be just the five of us out there with the gray feathers hunters. Like I say, we don't have much choice. We gotta guess where the buffalo will be. We don't have time to backtrack them. Sergeant Gorse. Yes, sir. I'm sending you back to the wagon train with a message for Mr. Seibertz. Uh, Private Jenkins' horse is fresher, Captain. And I ain't been on no buffalo hunt in a long time. All right, Sergeant. Jenkins. Jenkins, you'll go back to the wagon train and tell Mr. Seibertz to escort the train past Silver Springs, then return here in bivouac. If I should not return... He's to get clear if he can and report to the fort for reinforcements. Move out. Well, we got 48 hours, Will. Let's find those buffalo. See anything, Will? Nothing, Captain. Not on that side. Nothing this way either. You can see a long way. I don't like the look of them back there. Gray feather's getting anxious. I know. I, I just don't understand it, Will. It's not a sign. I've been thinking, Captain, we're too far south. The buffalo were headed south. Yeah, maybe not as fast and as far as we thought. Maybe they veered east. No, I've been thinking. It's been hot and dry for these last few days, and no wind. Buffalo don't travel much in the heat. They just stand and graze and suffer with thirst. But there's wind now. Well, some from the southwest. Well, if there's up north of here, it'd bring them the smell of water from the Laramie River. Yeah. Yeah, the river's still high. Yeah, and they'd probably be craving for water about now, and they'd stick their noses into the wind and make a run for it, like they do. You might be right, Will. So if we cut back northeast to the Laramie, we'll find them. They might be there. There's only one trouble. What? Look who's coming. Uh-huh. Captain, it is as Greyfeather spoke. You promised Buffalo two days. Now two days are gone. There is no Buffalo. Your promise is like all promises of white soldier. We've been looking a long time, Greyfeather, but now we know where the buffalo are. Captain, give much talk. We want buffalo, not talk. Greyfeather, 
My soldiers are at Silver Springs. If we do not return there, it will mean war for the Arapaho. Maybe you return, but he not. It is not yet evening of the second day. There is little time. Maybe, but enough. We're going to the waters of the Laramie and find your buffalo. On this next rise, we ought to be able to see. That's right, Will. What if they ain't there, Captain? Well, if not, maybe we can get to the river, find some cover. So stay close. Watch for my signal. Yes, sir. You, uh, you should have gone back to that wagon train, Sergeant. I guess I ain't much of a garrison soldier. All right, look sharp. Nothing. Wait, look there. Coming over the hills beyond, running for the river. Look at them. Thousands of them. Noses in the wind and running belly bent for breakfast. There go your buffalo, Grave Feather. All you can eat. Well, go on. Get them. Ego! Yeah, he sure was mighty hungry, Captain. Yeah. Well, I guess our luck held. I guess it did. Well, let's let's ride on down to the river. <laughs> I could do with a drink. Coming in! Sergeant Gorsh, dismiss the company. Yes, sir. Company, prepare to dismount. Yes. Well, you're back. Yes, sir. Did you have any trouble? No, sir. No casualties. Either side. You took long enough. The Oregon Trail's still open, Major. The Arapaho are back on the agency. What took the time? Why, uh... Why, we... We found some buffalo. Stopped to hunt. The Indians took enough meat back to the agency to keep them quiet all summer. I see. Well, that... That was fortunate. It was, uh... Mostly Will Granby's doing... He found the buffalo. Oh, well. Maybe I was wrong about him, Lee. Maybe he can be useful to us. I think he can. I, uh, I brought him back with us. His wife, too. You, uh, you like to meet her? An Arapaho? She's sure not St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, all right, Captain. Granby, howdy, Major. This is Will's wife, Major. Lark woman. How do you do? Yeah, lawyer. Uh, Mr. Granby. Yes, sir. If she's to stay around the post, she'll uh, she'll have to wear something more than that. Huh? Oh yeah. yeah she's got a shirt somewhere in the baggage. She Arapaho women aren't like Cheyenne or the Sioux or Crow. They don't wear much except when it's right cold. There are a lot of men on the post, Will. Huh? Oh, yes, sir, Captain. I'll, I'll see to it. Oh, and Mr. Granby. Yes, sir. My compliments on your work with Captain Quince. As of now, you may consider yourself on the Army payroll as scout. It'll be in tomorrow's special order. Yes, sir. The quartermaster will house you. Oblige, Major. 
Come on, child. Oh, she's, uh, she's kind of pretty, isn't she, Lee? Yeah. They make uh, pretty good wives, too. Clean, quiet, hardworking, nice people. Uh, you wouldn't be trying to soften me up, would you, Lee? Win me over to your way of thinking? I figure a man's got to make up his own mind about things, Major. Captain Quince. Yes, sir? Don't get too smart. Just be thankful I don't ask how you happen to run into Buffalo and turn a serious police duty into a pleasure trip. Hunting. My striker's cooking up some buffalo steaks, Major Daggett. You, uh, like to come over to my quarters and try some? <laughs> sure, let's go, Lee. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norma MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Dunkel, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Ralph Moody, Edgar Barrier, Frank Cady, and Eleanor Tannen. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. people were money, life would be simple indeed. We could enter them in books, in nice, regular columns. One for credit, another for loss. And as long as we kept the credit column higher, the losses wouldn't matter. Money spent can be re-earned, but people are not money. Every individual is irreplaceable. The time to care about them is now, before another victim is hurt. Obviously, heart researchers may not find the cures and preventatives to all heart ailments, the moment you contribute to the heart fund. But the sooner you do your part, the closer they'll come to answering the mysteries of the heart. Send your contribution to Heart, care of your local postmaster. That's Heart, H-E-A-R-T, Heart, care of your local postmaster. Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. 
and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. How far you reckon it is to the North Platte, Captain? Ten miles, Sergeant. No more than that. Lieutenant Seibert should have the company bivouac there by now. You aim to follow the creek bed clean up there, sir? Not after we water the horses. Ah, this spot's good enough. Yes, sir. Move up, Flint. Sergeant? Captain says we'll take a break here, ease those cinches, and lead the mounts down to the stream there in water. All right, Sergeant. After they're watered, they can pin graze. I'll mind them. Oh. Oh. Kind of peaceful, ain't it? It's quiet. Yeah, sit down, Gorse. More comfortable than the McClellan. Yes, sir. Yeah, them Shoshones, they got a way of wearing you out. You think they're still running, Captain? They'll be back. They never run for long. Not when they're hungry. I never heard of Shoshones as far east as the Nebraska border before. You can find them as far east as Texas. Only there we call them Comanches. They're offshoots of the same tribe. They sure don't talk the same. The dialect's the only difference. They're a disorganized lot, the Shoshones. I guess we can be glad for that. Yeah. Little of them goes a long way. How about the company, Captain? We'll know more when we rendezvous. Lieutenant Seibert's has orders to make camp on the North Platte until the company's accounted for. I think we held up, sir. Yeah, I hope so. I sure got a thirst. Hold it, Gorse. You hear that? Like digging? Yeah. Up there. Top of the rise. I don't see anybody. Neither do I yet. Come on. I move small. She's awful little to be man in that space. Man, she's not too handy with it. She must want to hold Doug awful bad. That hurts like granite. Yeah, let's go up, Sergeant. Feels like she's alone. Yeah. Ma'am? Oh. You, uh, you cut out a big job for yourself. I... I got no food, no coffee, nothing to offer the army. We're not asking for anything. Could have come yesterday. Yesterday I could have stood it if you'd come. You'll be all your life picking away at that hard pan. Haven't you got a man to do this for you? I had one yesterday. He's dead now. And a man's got a right to a grave. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Get Flint up here. Tell him we need a grave dug. Yes, sir. Where, uh, where is your husband, ma'am? In bed. In the hut there. Flint, hobble them horses and get up here. in here, sir. Gangrene. He's ridden with it. Must have taken him a long time to die. Yes, sir. Got a broken leg. That's hard pain, Captain. Looks hard, Gorse. Here. We'll wrap him in these bedclothes. Right, sir. The army always take over this way when it's too late. It's best he's out of here, ma'am. You ready, Gorse? Yes, sir. Now, easy now. Don't... Don't bury him. Just yet. The grave's not ready yet. Mm. 
Drink it, Mrs. Dennis. It's hot, that's all I can promise. You're a long time at it. It takes time. Drink it, Mrs. Dennis. Luther was a long time at it, too, the dying. I know. All the things he's lived through out here. Indian raids and blizzards and droughts, starvation. There's never been food enough. But a broken leg. That had to kill him. You're a long way from help out here. Yesterday, just yesterday. And you come today. Yesterday would have been too late, too, Mrs. Dennis. Always before I I could do something. I freeze with him, starve with him. When's the last time you watched a man die, Captain? Yesterday. Did it take ten days, ten days and ten nights? Did you hear him scream with pain and beg for you to go for help and, and beg you not to leave him? Miss Dennis! <laughs> Where will you go now? You got people somewhere? Oh, sure, I have people. Got parents in Philadelphia who never want to see me again. Two years ago, when Luther come back for me, they fought us all they could. They, when they saw I meant to leave with him, they said, don't come back. You can't stay here. The nearest to me is here. There's two dead babies out there by where I'll set Luther down. You can't stay here alone. is isn't safe. I'm not used to feeling safe. Captain... It's already out there. Then you can go now. Mrs. Dennis, this is no country for a woman alone. We'll take you to Fort Laramie. It's safe there. And You'll you... leave me be. It's not a brave thing staying on here. It's stupid. I mean to stay on with Luther. A while yet. All right, Mrs. Dennis. Let's get back to the horses, Sergeant. We're wasting time. Wasn't much grateful, was she, Captain? We did a small thing. She'd no cause to be grateful, Flint. She's no mind to be grateful for anything the West gives her or takes away. Must have been a pretty little thing once. Kind of dainty like. How old do you reckon she is, sir? Oh, early 20s. Huh. Looks most half a lifetime to me, Captain. All drawn tight and mean. The West does that to a woman. They come here as girls in no time they're women. Old, past their years. She's not mean, Flint. She's soft as a kitten. She's born a lot, that's all. Oh, you think that, sir? I know that. You'd think she'd want to leave, though. No use her hanging on to the land. She can't prove it up by herself. She'll get out once she thinks it's her own idea. Right now, she thinks she can't face the thought of leaving him there. She's got nowhere she wants to go. Wonder, wonder what'll happen to her. I mean, alone, like that. She can't fend for herself, can she, Captain? Those women I seen out here would find them a man, any man, marry again, just to live. They hate the West. Chances are they'd hate the man, too. But they keep marrying to live. Now this one, Captain. You seem pretty sure, Sergeant. Just a feeling. She'll go back east somewhere. Leave her dead. Go back where she came from. She don't belong out here. Well, she's got no wagon or a stock to pull it. If she goes, she'll have to walk. Maybe she won't, sir. Maybe she won't.
Come in. You sent for me, Captain? Yeah, Gorse. Come in. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse, ever since we got back from Horse Creek, the fort's been full of stories that make the cavalry sound like a wet nurse outfit. Do you know anything about them? What What kind of stories, sir? You know any troopers who are going around collecting money to send Mrs. Dennis back east? Troopers? No, sir, I don't. I've been kind of lucky at poker lately. Thought maybe I'd share it with whoever's running the charity around here. I guess that'd be me, sir. I guess it would. Here. Obliged, Captain. You're not going to make this a habit? No, sir. You taking the money to her? No, sir. Private Flint's leave starts tomorrow after first call. He'll do it. That's all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. She, uh, she reminds you of someone, Gorse? Girl somewhere? No, sir, it ain't that. It's just she's so little and all, kind of like a stray. She don't belong out here. Carry on, Sergeant. Captain Quince reporting, sir. Oh, I'm afraid you didn't do a very good job on the Shoshones, Captain. We didn't wipe them out, Major, if that's what you mean. You met them near the Nebraska border before, isn't that right? And they were hightailing it into Nebraska the last we saw, those that lived. Mm. Well, they're back, Lee. And in numbers, too. They're hungry in numbers. I'm familiar with your charitable streak, Captain Quince. I understand it's spread to Sergeant Gorse, right on down to the ranks. There's no cause for worry, Major. It's not widespread enough to be called an epidemic. All right, all right, Lee. The Shoshones are raiding homesteaders from our side of the North Platte, south along Horse Creek. I understand there aren't many settlers along the creek. No, not many. They're not just hungry, Captain Quince. This time they're carrying off women. Any questions? No, sir. Then move out. There's smoke ahead, Captain. I see there is, Mr. Seibertz. Might be able to surprise them. Just how do you think we could manage that? Well, sir, if the fire's still burning, chances are there may be Indians around somewhere. Look at that smoke again, Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir? Well? I still see it. Good for you. Then you see the fire smoldering, not burning fresh. You think the Shoshones have gone on, sir? They're not ones to sit around and admire their work once they've struck. Oh! Sergeant! Yo! I think we can find them, Captain. They're probably hours away by now. Unless it's a trap, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir? Sergeant, that's Carpenter's cabin ahead, isn't it? It was, sir. You and I'll ride in, Sergeant. Mr. Seibert will move the patrol to that rise to the left and hold the position. Two shots will be your signal to move in, Mr. Seibert. Yes, sir. That's an old fire, Captain, smoldering. Mr. Seibert and I know that, Sergeant. Any questions, Mr. Seibert? No, sir. Then move out. Yes, sir. Come on, Gorse. an old fire sergeant. Yes, sir. And it'd be his wife's brother by the cabin. He ain't been here a month, sir. That's all there was? Carpenter, his wife, her brother? Just the three of them, Captain. I, I don't see her anywhere, right? No, it's not likely we will. you think it'd be enough just to Kill a man, wouldn't she, Captain? You'd think so, Gorse. 
Come on. No sign of life, sir? No sign of life, Mr. Seibertz. I was wondering, I Captain, know what you're wondering, Sergeant. Well, her place would be north of here, sir. Due north, along the creek. Mr. Seibertz. Yes, sir. You'll take half the patrol and move along Horse Creek to the south. You see those dots of smoke on the horizon? I see them, sir. Well, check them. Yes, sir. Sergeant Gorse, prepare to move the other half to the north. Yes, sir. All right, fall in. Come I'm going north with Gorse, right. Mr. Seibertz. We'll rendezvous at the usual point right. in the North Platte. First arrival makes camp and waits. With pickets out. Right, Captain. I'll judge the fires better this time, sir. Use your eyes, Mr. Seibertz. Then use your head. How long are you going to wait, Captain? Nothing stirred up there by her place. The troopers in position? Yes, sir. Full circle. Set back in the hills, all around the hut. Likely she's gone by now. Flint would have been through here with the money two, three days ago. Maybe. I'm going in, Gorse. You got a clear shot at the door? All the way. I didn't think we'd find her hut still standing. Well, we'll see, Sergeant. Hold your fire, Gorse. That came from the hut, sir. The army's not welcome here, Captain. You fire that again, ma'am. The whole patrol will move in. You have some money to give me, too, Captain. <coughs> oh. Oh. I will we'll talk inside, Mrs. Dennis. You all right, sir? No problem, Sergeant. How many men, Captain? Six, all around the hut. Six army men, after one woman. The Shoshones are raiding all along Horse Creek. You're lucky they missed you. Lucky? You can uh, bring a few things, but not much. Let's get them together. You didn't answer me, Captain. I asked you what you come for. I told you to take you back. I was real took in at first. I felt sort of kindly toward all the... Brave army men who put by the money for me. Private Flint was here then? <laughs> that his name? That nice, smiley one who dug Luther's grave? Yeah, he was here. Clean till early this morning he was here. I don't figure I owe the army a thing now, Captain. Not a thing. Um... Sorry, Mrs. Dennis. You're always too late, aren't you, Captain? Too late for everything. I... I am sorry. I warned you it wasn't safe here. So your hands are clean. Your conscience is clear. I didn't mean that. Oh, you warned me, but I had in mind you was talking about Indians when you said this was no country for a woman alone. Indians or Flint or any man who hasn't seen a woman for a long time. Now you've come. Six of you. To force you to safety this time, ma'am. There's a safe place for a woman out here? Fort Laramie, for the time being. Flint was from Fort Laramie. Private Flint isn't the whole cavalry, Mrs. Dennis. You'll uh, you'll get food there, rest. In a couple of days, there's a stage out for the east. With cavalry protection? Not unless it's called for, ma'am. <laughs> Go back home. I guess that's all that's left. <laughs> I, I hate that, Captain. I hate it. <laughs> I, I, I know how you feel, Miss Dennis, but I, I just want to tell you that I... You don't. You couldn't. You couldn't know how I feel about anything. I'm going to get my things now. Uh, 
the stage driver says about five minutes. I wondered if I'd see you again, Captain. I owed it to the sergeant, the troopers, to see their money got spent the way they meant it. I wondered if I'd find a feeling in me to be grateful to you. Any of you. No one's asking for any thanks, ma'am. No one expects any. Once I can forget, maybe I can be grateful. You're better off leaving. Luther was a good man. I used to read all he sent me about the West. He he saw the, the, the good of it. New and full of hope, that's how he said it. I, I never saw that in it, Captain. I never saw the good. It isn't all good, it isn't all bad either. But you're better off back home reading about it. Well, I, I'd better be getting on the stage now. Safe journey to you, ma'am. Thank you, Captain. And I I, I mean thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Dennis. All set, driver. Yes, sir. in the saloon. You should feel right about things now, Gorse. You were the first to know she didn't belong here. I won't feel right till he's settled, Captain. It... Oh, but how can he be now? The army can't touch him without Mrs. Dennis tells her story. She's been through enough. But how about him? Why, he'd have drawn time, plenty of time for what he'd done to her. Don't worry about it, Gorse. Well, now, wait, Captain. You can't do it that way. I... I've seen you like this before, Captain. You'll kill him. I'll handle it, Gorse. You know what they do to you, sir. Killing him ain't worth that. I'm not going to kill him. But I am going to mark him up. Maybe he'll wish I had killed him. Is he drunk? Not yet, sir. In uniform? No. Still on leave. You give me five minutes emergency leave. Just five minutes. You leave him be, Gorse. That's an order. Yes, sir. Over there, Captain. I see him. You stay here. But, Captain... That's an order, Gorse. Yes, sir. What? Captain Quince. Hello. Set your glass down, Flint. (laughs) Not on orders just yet, Captain. Two more days of my leave coming to me. Set it down. Uh, He's got his rights, Captain. This saloon's not run by the Army. It is now. Clear everyone out of here, barkeep. Now, you just wait Sergeant! Clear the premises. Yes, sir. What is this? I don't know what you got in mind. I do. There's regulations on my side, Captain. I'm waiting to hear you say it isn't true, Flint. (laughs) Setting your saber aside... Taking off your tunic don't make you less an officer. You can't lay a hand on me. There's regulations. I'm waiting, Flint. You you touch me and I'll go over your head. I'll tell my story to the Major. You do that. He'll break you down to my size once I tell my story. You tell him, Flint, and tell it all, because I'll be there to see you don't leave any of it out. And don't come any closer. I got every right to defend myself. You sure do. And put that chair down. I I don't care who you are. <laughs> I'm just like you now, Flint. I got every right to defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> Your saloon's looking kind of run down, barkeep. Looks to me like it's due for some repairs. Yeah, it sounded like it. But what about the customer? You just gonna leave him there? See, he's taken to the infirmary, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Is he bad off, Captain? I'm not the best judge, Gorse. I'd say a good army doctor could get him on his feet again in uh, six months, maybe. 
Well, that saloon brawl in Shorey is punishing stuff, sir. It's deadly, Sergeant. Well, what about me, my saloon? Well, I'd watch who I let in there after this, barkeep. That man had a bad temper. Threw one of your chairs at me. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, John Daner, and Barney Phillips. Jack Moyles is Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell is Lieutenant Seibertz. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. CBS Radio urges you to follow through to make sure you're registered to vote next November no matter which candidate you prefer. You are lost in making a choice unless you're registered to vote in a national election. Are you sure you're registered? Are you sure the rest of the voters in your family are? Make sure today. Registration laws vary from state to state. Make sure you're in the book. Starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. I said, Eddie, what's the cavalry going to do to win glory today, Sergeant? I'm glad you spoke up, Suthie. 
You and Private Plover there have just volunteered to make mud bricks for the new powder magazine building. Sergeant. No, no, Sergeant. Me and Plover were working that adobe all day yesterday. Another month, you ought to be finished. I didn't join this army to make mud bricks. You refusing an order, Suthi? Put your shoes on, Plover. Let's get going. Now, the rest of you men will finish cleaning this barracks and fall out in 10 minutes. I suppose you're taking them buffalo hunting, Sergeant. Each man will go to supply and get a pick or a shovel. We're building road today. Building a road. That's enough. I said 10 minutes. You line up smiling and happy or I'll work you all night. You got your shoes on, Plover? Well, sure. What do I need shoes for? I'll be on my hands and knees most of the time. Ain't it a shame? Men like us doing that kind of work. Yeah. Well, I'm ready, Suthi. Then let's go. Ten minutes, soldiers, and don't forget them shovels. <laughs> no, I reckon any outfit's got to do some time in garrison, Suthi. We've been in garrison three months. It's got me talking to myself. Well, leastwise, we ain't getting shot at by no wild Indians. What's a cavalry fur if it ain't to get shot at and to do a little shooting itself? All the Indians around here is peaceable. Leastwise, it has been the last few months. <laughs> Reservation Indians. Them shine ought to be ashamed of themselves. Sitting around watching the women do the work, waiting to be fed by the government. Where's the gumption, anyway? Well... Good thing they is peaceable, I think. Them engines go on a tear makes it bad for everybody. They go on a tear and get us out of the garrison. Well, they ain't going, so you just might as well face up to it. I could make them go, Clover. Oh, now, stop that talk. I've told you how I could make them go. Now, looky here, Suthi. I ain't even going to listen to you. Why, you could be shot for just what you're thinking. Nobody'd ever know. You know you're crazy. Being stuck here in a fort so long has driven you plumb crazy. Your mouth's getting awful big, Clover. Oh, now don't get on the prod. Look here, I'll tell you what. Tonight you and me are going to sneak off the post and we'll go into town and have us a drink of that gal you like. <laughs> that Ella Braden. <laughs> How about that, Sue? Never you mind, Ella Braden. You called me crazy. Oh, I didn't mean nothing by I it. ain't crazy, and I'll prove it to you. You put that knife away, Suthi. You got a knife? Get it out. No. Get it out, I said. I'm gonna cut you, Plover. I'll do it. All right, that's how you want it. Now, there's my knife. Now, you cut me, Suthi. Come on, now, cut me. I'll lay your whole face open, soldier. Hold it, you man. Lieutenant Cybert, you don't mean nothing to me. Cap quits with him, Suthi. Watch your face! Oh, rip your belly open, you try that again! Stop that, man. Put those knives away. It's a fair fight. You got no right to stop Do me. as I say, Suthi. You cut me, I'll put mine away. I can't quit less than he does. All right, Suthi. You too, Plover. I know you're on edge being in garrison so long, but that's part of soldiering. And so is keeping your temper. Now put those knives away before we all get in trouble. Oh, there's mine. All right, you here, the captain, Suthi. There's mine. You men on detail? Making mud pies again, Captain. Then get to it. If there's any more fighting, you'll go to the guardhouse. That clear? Yes, sir. Move yes, out. Sir. Those men are crazy enough to have stuck you, Captain, getting between them that way. One of them might have stuck me, Mr. Seibert's, not both of them. They need action, Captain. They're soldiers, not laborers. Yeah, they're even forgetting to think like soldiers. There's going to be more trouble like this, Mr. Seibertz. A lot more. Captain Quince reporting, sir. At ease, Captain. Well, how's B Company getting along? Well, Major Daggett, I guess B Company's getting along about the way you'd expect. Like those two men of yours last week who were going at each other with knives? 
I didn't know you'd heard about that, Major. I heard about it. I also heard how you failed to punish him. With all due respect, sir, it's my company. And you know I never interfere on a company level. I'd transfer out of here if you did. Oh, I'm sure you would. Oh, it isn't easy, is it, Lee? <laughs> uh, much more of this. I'll be looking for a good fight myself. Enforced inactivity. The bane of the cavalry. That and the salt pork diet. Two more of my men came down with scurvy today, Major. That's what I wanted to see you about, Lee. Oh? Uh-huh. How'd you like to go on a buffalo hunt? Buffalo hunt? I thought we couldn't yeah, go I know, out. I know. General orders are to avoid antagonizing the Indians by hunting buffalo in their territory. We're sitting right in the middle of their territory. 22 cases of scurvy are enough. Higher orders are to hold Fort Laramie with a full complement of cavalry. Captain Quince, you think you can bring in some fresh meat without starting a new Indian war? I can try, sir. I'm dependent on you. Yes, sir. You'll take 15 men, two wagons, and six mules. You'll leave one half hour after Reveille tomorrow morning. You'll return Saturday by sundown without fail, exactly one week from today. Any questions? No, sir. Now, I hope you'll see fit to include those two men, Suthi and Plover, in your party. I intend to, sir, as Skinner's. <laughs> and move out. Hey, Shooty, how you feel? Not so good, Plover. I'm bleeding again. Or most to the fort. Here, see the man? They're standing around waiting on us. That's what the captain said. Saturday by sundown, we made it. Yeah, some of us made it. Eight of us. Eight out of 15. Seven men killed. We done all right. Uh, that can show. Hey, look, there's Ranger Daggett. He's waiting, too, you see him? No. I can't see so good, Clover. My head hurts bad. Everything's kind of swimmy. You ain't gonna pass out now, are you? The way you got me roped onto this saddle wouldn't matter none if I did pass out. Well, there's other boys hurt worse than you. I ain't complaining. Vince up ahead there, he passed out. Got him tied belly down across his saddle. Then I reckon he's dead. We're here, Suthi. We're back. I can't see nothing but the fort. Oh, my head hurts awful. Control, up! Corporal Mercer, you'll remain with the wounded. They'll stay mounted. Sergeant Gorse, take a detail from the garrison to help these men down, get them to the hospital. Yes, sir. Rest of you, stable the horses. Control dismissed. Uh, Mr. Sergeant Sibert. Gorse, I have two Yes, sir. Would you take my horse to the stable for me? Certainly, Captain. I'd better report to the Major there. Yes, sir. If you'd care to, uh, come by my quarters later. I'll, I'll find us a drink. Thank you, sir. Captain Quince reporting, sir. You're not hurt, Lee. No, sir. Good. What happened? Cheyenne. Over a hundred braves hit us. Dawn, two days ago. I had a guard posted, but they rode right over them. Seven troopers killed in battle. Another died in his saddle about noon today. Wagons, mules lost. I sent a scout looking for you. He never found us. What is it, Major? Cheyenne jumped the reservation? Yeah. And nobody knows why. They slipped out in the middle of the night and disappeared. I can't figure it. Big Wolf's been as peaceful a chief as I've known. Big Wolf's young son died a couple of weeks ago. Maybe that got him started. I think... I think I'll ride out to the reservation tomorrow, take a look around. What for? No particular reason, Major. Just curious. Captain, I don't think them Cheyenne left a single thing out here. Well, they sure stripped the place, Gorse. 
I guess when you ain't got much, you don't leave nothing behind at all. Oh. Got all them poles over there with the burying platforms on them. Oh, what about them? They're all new, Captain. I mean, they're empty. There's no corpses laying on them. Can't be new. They must have taken their dead with them, Sergeant. I don't understand it. That ain't like them. Why would they do that? They, they were in quite a hurry. What do you mean? Look at that grave over there. It's half torn down. Yeah. Kind of spooky out here, ain't it? Yeah. Well, we'll stop in town on the way back, Sergeant. Now you're making this detail worthwhile, Captain. Yeah, I got some business at the post office. Post office? But I'll meet you at the saloon when I'm through. I'll be there, Captain. You can depend on me. much money, but well, soldiering's an honorable profession. It's better than being a thief, isn't it? I, uh, I hope I'm not intruding, Sergeant Gorse. Captain? Uh, Captain Quince, this here's Ella Braden. How do you do, Ella? Pleased to meet you, Captain. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. I've been trying to explain to Ella that Soldiers are just as good as civilians. I never said they weren't, Sergeant. Sergeant Gorse has been in the cavalry 20 years, Ella. He's still trying to figure out why. <laughs> I think you're right, Captain. It's all he talks about. Now, that ain't so. I mean, when you're being a gentleman, Sergeant. Oh. <laughs> you know what he did a couple of weeks ago, Captain? Now, Ella. What'd he do, Ella? Well, he... <laughs> nah... Now, I'm too much of a lady to say it. Thank goodness for that, anyway. Ella, if Gorse gets out of line, just you whack him with a bottle. It's the only kind of language he understands sometimes. Oh, I got something better to whack him with, Captain. It's carved from solid bone. What? Yeah, I got it in this sack. Brought it in to show to the barkeep. Now, what in the world is that, Ella? Let me see that. It's an Indian souvenir of some kind. Where'd you get this, Ella? A kid at the fort gave it to me. He found it somewhere, I guess. Who gave it to you? His name is Suthi. Suthi. Well, what's wrong, Captain? This is a Cheyenne totem, Ella. I'm uh, going to have to keep it. Oh, here, now that's mine. You give it back. Sorry, Ella. You'll have to find another souvenir. This one's caused enough trouble. <laughs> Morning, Captain Quince. Lieutenant Mather, I want to see Private Suthi. Where's his bed? Uh, at the far end, Captain. There, where Sergeant Gorse is. Thank you. Captain? Gorse? Hello, Suthi. Oh, Captain Quince. How are you, sir? How are you feeling, Suthi? Oh, pretty good, Captain. Except for my head aching all the time. You'll get over it. I better. I can't stand it this way, sir. I wish they'd killed me if I got to go on like this. Suthi, you seen this before? I don't know, Captain. What is it? You know what it is. Where'd you get it? I can't help you, Captain. I'm sorry. Maybe later sometime. Now, look here, Suthi. You know I won't take an answer like Captain that. Captain Quince. What is it, Sergeant? Would you step over here a minute, sir? All right. Oh, what do you want? Oh, my head. I, I wish you'd you stop aching. Oh. oh, I see. All right, Sergeant. Aches all the time. Well, Suthi, I won't bother you anymore. I know all I need to anyway. I don't know what you're talking about, Captain. I ought to hate you, Suthi. But I only feel sorry for you. What you've done, I'm going to try to set right. But whether I can or not, you're going to have to live with it the rest of your life. I think I'm speaking for a lot of good men who died because of you. Sergeant? Yes, sir? I'll meet you at the main gate in half an hour. 
and have our horses saddled and packed with two days' rations. Move out. I find this hard to believe, Captain. Major Daggett, I... I've always tried to think of every trooper in my company as a real soldier. Somehow it makes me feel less of one myself when I find out about a man like Private Suthi. I can understand that, Captain Quince. I sympathize with you. Yes, sir. But what you propose to do about it is nothing short of suicide. I can't allow that. I'm meeting Sergeant Gorse at the main gate in a few minutes, Major. I'm volunteering for this mission. If he goes with me, he'll have to volunteer, too. Big Wolf and his Cheyenne are a mission for the entire 2nd Cavalry, Captain. Not for two men only. It was me those Cheyenne warriors hit, Major. It was my men I watched die. This mission belongs to B Company. To me. Not to the 2nd Cavalry. You're putting a terrible responsibility on me, Captain Quince. As a volunteer? I don't see how, Major. All right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Oh, Lee. Yes, sir? I'll give you one order. You're to return to Fort Laramie within two weeks. Without fail. More coffee, Gorse? I could sure use it. It's hot. I can see that. Thanks, Captain. Uh, this is better than garrison, isn't it, Sergeant? Oh, it sure is. Nights full of stars. We had a good dinner of pork and chickpeas. Coffee's hot. There's plenty of it. Got a big fire going here, lots of wood. There's nothing wrong with this, Captain. Except for one little thing, maybe. What's that, Sergeant? Oh, it's hardly worth mentioning. Oh, go ahead. Speak up. Well, from all the sign we've seen today, I'd guess we're smack in the middle of about four Cheyenne war parties. You no, know, I uh, think you're right, Sergeant. Of course, I don't know for sure, but with this bonfire we got going, I got a sneaky idea them engines just might catch on to our being here sooner or later. They might. Sorry you came along, Sergeant. I volunteered. Interest in mission, you say? Yeah. I also said we we might get killed, didn't I? You didn't say how. I don't know how, Sergeant. I bet I could tell you. Not interested. If we get killed, this mission will be a failure. Now, say I hadn't thought of that. Now, that'd be a doggone shame, wouldn't it, Cap? It would. I can just see all them generals back in Washington sitting around a big shiny table saying that darn fool captain, that darn fool sergeant couldn't accomplish a simple little old mission. What's the cavalry coming to? That's what they'll be saying. <laughs> uh, throw some wood on the fire, Gorse. You're closest. Sure. Captain Quince? Yeah? They're here. All around us. Step back to the fire. Real slow. If they can see anything at all, they, they can see we ain't armed. They wouldn't show themselves this close if they didn't know that. They're coming in, Captain. Stand steady, Sergeant. No sudden movements. It's sure some fine way for the cavalry to go engine hunting. We found them, didn't we? What happens now? That's not entirely up to us, Sergeant. Easy now. Sure. Zila ho di na yi. Yi alo zilo. Di ish la yi nya. Yi What's he saying? He says he'll take us to Big Wolf, all right. He says the chief wouldn't want to miss the torture before they kill us. You, uh, you wake, Gorse? 
Who could do any sleeping tied up like this? It'll be dawn soon. I just ain't looking forward to it today, Captain. At least we'll get out of this teepee. You know, this is the first time I was ever inside one. I ain't missed a thing. Oh, I don't know. A teepee can be pretty nice when you got a fire going and a buffalo robe to wrap up in. Maybe some antelope steak for breakfast, a jug of spring water, maybe a woman to do all the work. Oh, you're spoiled, Gorse. Rotten spoiled. Well, it ain't the frontier life, did it, Captain? I can tell you that. You never should have left home. Oh, it's nice, he says they're ready for us, Sergeant. Oh, oh, was he, Niava. What was that? Big Wolf hasn't returned. They've decided not to wait for him. But Captain... He was our only chance I could have talked to Big Wolf. Not these other warriors, not even worth trying. Ishlai Ani. <sighs> He's gonna cut us loose. <clears throat> Why not? With a half hundred braves out there, we ain't going no place. They can tie a man up awful tight. I ain't even sure I can walk. I lea azo. Well, let's go, Sergeant. Sure. Sergeant, what is it? Big Wolf. He's back. Thank heaven for that. Well, it's a chance, at least. There he is. Say, he looks like a chief, don't he? Yeah, he does. Captain Quince. Hello, Big Wolf. My people are ready for your death. I know. We allowed ourselves to be captured, Big Wolf. This I do not understand. I wanted to see you. I wanted to bring you something. White soldier has brought shame and dishonor to my people and to me. You're speaking of your son's grave. White soldier come at night, left my son's body on ground. Yes. And he stole this from your son's grave. The totem, totem of my clan. The white soldier did this to dishonor you, Big Wolf. Cheyenne, recover honor in war and by killing you. Let me say something first, Big Wolf. It was neither of us did this thing. It was a soldier who was weak and foolish and bad. This soldier has dishonored me as well as you. We do not want war with your people. Who is soldier? His name is Suthi. Give him to me. No, I can't do that. Then you must die. You have already killed eight soldiers, Big Wolf. Soon many soldiers will come. More soldiers than you have braves. Give me Suthi. So you can punish him? He must be punished. He must die. Big Wolf... When you wake in the morning and step outside your lodge, what do you see? Tell me. I see the sun on the land, morning shadows, bright mountains. And if you could not see all this? It would not be good. The white soldier, Suthi, has already been punished, Big Wolf. By you... It is not enough. No, not by me. By your warriors in the fight. He is blind, Big Wolf. Blind? Blind for the rest of his life. His punishment will never stop. You are brave men to come here with the totem. There must be no war between our people. The thing is done... Seven of my warriors died in fight. It is enough. We ride back in peace? Yes. Then we've won, Big Wolf. We've both won.
Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by John Meston, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Jack Crucian, Howard Culver, and Vivi Janis. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. The time to fight heart disease is now, before another victim is hurt. Obviously, heart researchers may not find the cures and preventatives to all heart ailments the moment you contribute to the heart fund. But the sooner you do your part, the closer they'll come to answering the mysteries of the heart. Send your contributions to Heart, care of your local postmaster. That's Heart, H-E-A-R-T, Heart, care of your local postmaster. 